The 2011 National Alumni Association Distinguished Alumnus Award goes to Dr. Michelle Mariscalco. As a high school senior, Michelle Mariscalco caught the attention of University of Dayton Director of Admissions, Myron Abbaugh. She was valedictorian. Um, I was very impressed with not only that credential, but just the kind of person she seemed to be. Thought, boy, if we can get a kid like this, you know, this she will add to the, to the culture here. As a student, Michelle worked in Brother Don Geiger's plant physiology lab. She stood out because she had all these gifts. First of all, she was very, very bright, and uh, she was very diligent about what she did. But, but also, uh, she had good insight into what she was doing, so she was very uh, impressive. I learned a lot about research. I learned about, a lot about myself, uh, and I thought that I would never want to do research again after that experience. Even though I love Dr. Geiger, and I thought his sugar beets were pretty cool, it wasn't my passion. It took me until I found something that I was equally passionate about. It wasn't sugar beets. <laughs> though I'm glad it was for Dr. Geiger, but once I got to my first patient in which we really didn't understand what was going on, I was caring for a, a young person in the intensive care unit who developed uh, terrible lung disease, had to be on a mechanical ventilator, and then subsequently died. Trying to understand what we could do for that patient and why we couldn't help her uh, at a time that we should have been able to, or so I thought, really began my interest in um, understanding basic physiology and pathophysiology and, and reinvigorated, or really began my research career at that point. Michelle has had an impact on the lives of critically ill children through her work as a physician, as a researcher, and as a teacher. She is a past chair of the Sub-Board of Critical Care Medicine for the American Board of Pediatrics and has won numerous teaching awards. She is currently Associate Dean for Research at the University of Kansas School of Medicine in Wichita. When you look at Michelle's list of accomplishments, published journals, um, she's on many boards and committees, she is highly regarded and respected in her field. Do you remember who amongst our juniors was the person that could give orders to both of us at the same time? Michelle! Michelle. You're going to edit all this, right? <laughs> People tend to like her from the get-go. They recognize she's a person who is highly intelligent, has a great background, and so I think she engenders uh, confidence and respect. Michelle can uh, turn a difficult situation into a simple one. She is able to understand complexity like no one I ever met. The energy level that she projected was uh, remarkable. Michelle had more energy than all of us put together. She can outwork any resident, any fellow, any medical student, any attending. The, the, the hardest worker I have ever met. Michelle believes her biggest impact comes from teaching. And took care of a lot of kids. I've taken care of, you know, you don't do critical care for 30 years and not take care of a lot of kids. But to be able to train people, now I've taken care of 10,000 kids. She is a teacher beyond any I have ever known. So I have been privileged to be one of her pupils and one of her mentees and I hope I can do her justice by continuing to be a good critical care physician. She is my uh, mentor, both in clinical medicine as well as in research. She's the reason why I came here and I owe whatever I am to her. Uh, she would always have a hand on your back to push you forward, but would be prepared to kick you uh, to move in the right direction. Michelle is a very hard critic, and, um, but she's always right on the money. She was always leading by example. She was always taking us to the limit, pushing the envelope farther than we could do. She's done that for countless physicians through the years, and she's made pediatric critical care a better place through that. Michelle is a leader in critical care medicine who combines expertise with compassion. In my residency with her, I was on call one night, and uh, it was a very busy call night, and she took the time to change a baby's diaper that was just changing my perspective. It was, I'm not here to just be a doctor, I'm here to take care of this child, whatever he needs. And of all the things that she's ever done for me in my life, that act of changing the diaper was the most impacting.
It's how you do it and who you impact that makes all the difference. The university couldn't have picked a more worthy alumna for this award. For her lifelong effort in promoting the goals of the University of Dayton, and for her everyday living of learn, lead, and serve, the National Alumni Association is proud to honor Dr. Michelle Mariscalco with its Distinguished Alumnus Award. That was pretty amazing, wasn't it? Um, so, I, I actually know Susan. We actually ran across each other at a AAMC meeting about three or four years ago, and uh, we had a great time. We had a great time this afternoon um, chatting, and I've gotten a chance to meet the, the other awardees this evening. As with them, um, I'd like to thank the committee for recognizing me today. You all know what a great honor it is. I thank Dr. Myron Arbaugh, I made you a doctor. <laughs> he has a remarkable memory. He knew me for 40 years uh, and had remembered me, and I thank him for that. He nominated me for this award. Uh, Dr. Kathy Long Whitberg, sitting there, uh, my colleague both at the University of Dayton and at the University of Cincinnati, uh, alongside whom I learned to think creatively and logically as we built one sugar beet torture chamber after another. <laughs> for Dr. Don Geiger, um, and of course, Dr. Don also, uh, really my first academic mentor. Don himself is a, a distinguished alumni winner, as you know. Uh, he showed me, he's the first to show me what a great scientist is and how they think. Um, I've been fortunate, very fortunate, to have some outstanding mentors, scientific mentors, after Don, but really it was Don's knowing Dawn and recognizing what, that, what a real mentor is that really has made all the difference. Um, Dr. Fernando Stein, you met and you heard about. Dr. Larry Jefferson was in the, uh, was in the video also. And uh, Nadim Shafi, they were, they were great. They put their fingers to the keyboard and, and wrote letters for me, so I thank them. Uh, Dr. Stein is my colleague and has been my friend for 30 years. He thanks you also, actually, because it was because of Fernando who uh, oversaw the videotaping in Houston and the interviews and he said he had a blast doing it so he thanks you. Um, it is unnerving, it is humbling to be honored in such a manner and particularly on the eve of uh, remembering the great tragedy and honoring the great shows of courage, devotion, honor and love of September 11, 2001. So my own achievements are fairly underwhelming in comparison. Um, the great videotape that you all saw was overseen by Mike Kurtz. Mike is himself a uni University of Dayton graduate. He came to Wichita and he worked with me and the dean to get the footage that you all just saw. Uh, and as my family and colleagues can attest, and as you probably can notice from the video, I'm hardly ever at a loss for words. Nonetheless, when Mike asked, where would you be now if you had not attended the University of Dayton, literally, I was speechless. Uh, I, in fact, could not think where I would have be or who I would be. Uh, and in fact, I mumbled something incomprehensibly. And uh, fortunately, as you can see, it didn't make it to the tape. So I was grateful for that. <laughs> I graduated from UD a very long time ago, uh, long before there was something called a desktop computer, and long before the banner, Learn, Lead, and Serve, was put on the UD website. Uh, but really, as you can see from the people who have who really been up here and have received awards, learn, lead, and serve is, do, is deeply rooted in all of the graduates of UD, and especially this graduate. I graduated from UD when UD was the only university in town, or just about, forgive me my friend Mary Ruth, uh, Wright State was m newly minted, uh, and, uh, but uh, it is my, um, my family's alma mater, as it is with other individuals tonight. Uh, my father and my uncles who are here were the first in their immigrant families to attend college. It was also the alma mater of my brother Mike from 1975 and my sister Marie from 1981. And in fact, we're down to the third generation, Mike's daughter Anne, who's not here tonight, uh, and we're very proud of her. Um, it almost was not my alma mater, but 
wiser heads, and that would be my father, and a great scholarship from the University of Dayton, a very wise thing for them, and a last minute aha moment for me prevailed. I learned from some really, really remarkable educators, and, and you've heard a lot of them mentioned tonight. I wanna to talk about a little bit more about some of the um, folks in uh, arts and sciences. Brother Don, of course, uh, Kelly Williams, who's here this evening, uh, uh, people who are no longer with us, Dr. Shrout, Dr. Chantel, Dr. Ramsey, Dr. Michaelis, Dr. Fox, Dr. Berkey. Um, however, I also learned some things that were not typical for a pre-medical student. I learned about art history, I learned some incredible literature, and I even learned Chaucerian Middle English. Um, in medicine, we expect ourselves to be lifelong learners. It really was at the University of Dayton that I began that journey. The decades after I graduated from UD have been ones of tremendous growth and challenges, both for me and for the university, as a matter of fact. It's been with great pride that I watched as the University of Dayton became a truly national and, in fact, an international university under some very remarkable leadership, first of Brother Ray and then of Dr. Curran. Um, learn, lead, and serve has become deeply ingrained in the graduates in the educational programs, in the service programs. Learn, lead, and serve has also been for me a journey and has taken me to some very remarkable places, personally, professionally, spiritually, and physically. UD and its recent students and graduates, and Scott I think is a great example of that, are learning to immerse themselves in their community. They look around, they look to see who they serve, they learn, they think globally. They may act globally, they may act locally um, or regionally. And I have to tell you, the University of Dayton got there ahead of me. It has taken me quite a bit longer to step back and look to serve a much larger community, to learn to merge the passions of exemplary patient care, cutting edge research, and stewardship of some very precious resources. It's one of the reasons that I left a great group of folks in, in Houston and really a gem of a job. And I um, now have joined a great group of new folks in Wichita and a new direction in my career. Innovation is a word that we hear a lot of lately. It is a word that is part of my daily vocabulary in, in Wichita. It resonates as to who we are, or at least who we imagine ourselves to be as citizens of the United States. However, to learn innovate, to innovate, we must learn the innovation must serve a purpose, and ultimately it will lead us to a new way, a new purpose, and perhaps a new life. Learn, lead, and serve, that's the University of Dayton way. Again, I thank you for this great honor, and in accepting this award, I do so for myself and all of those other University of Dayton graduates who do not get these awards, yet do learn, lead, and serve each and every day. Thank you very much.